Hello everyone, I'm Alfonso Valdez from Clickit. In this video, I'm going to teach you a crucial step in your next generation SaaS application, which is to create a multi-tenant architecture with different techniques. This will bring into your SaaS application and web development team multiple benefits in terms of cost reduction, including server hosting costs, a reduction in your SaaS application maintenance by having a single source of trust, and the speed up of your web development lifecycle. At the end of this video, as a software architect, DevOps manager, or IT director, you will understand the techniques to modernize your SaaS application that is essential to jumpstart into the enterprise SaaS software. But before I get started, I want you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, so that way you can get more DevOps content like this and you will get notified. We help SaaS companies to reduce DevOps costs through a near-share framework, which makes us work as your in-house DevOps team. Additionally, we have a 30-day trial offer with no upfront payment. Try us before you buy. So let's start with what is multi-tenant architecture. A multi-tenant architecture is an ecosystem in which a single environment can serve multiple tenants or organizations with a scalable, available, and resilient architecture. Moreover, the underlying multi-tenant infrastructure is completely shared logically isolated and fully centralized services. And finally, the multi-tenant architecture evolves according to the organization of subdomain that is logged into the SaaS application and totally transparent to the end user. On the other hand, a single tenant architecture is a single architecture per tenant or organization where the application has its own infrastructure, hardware and software ecosystem. Let's say you have 10 customers or tenants. In this case, you will need to create 10 standalone environments and your SaaS application will function as a single tenant architecture totally isolated per tenant. Additionally, this implies more cost, more maintenance, and a level of difficulty to update across environments. Now, take note guys, the best case to leverage a single tenant architecture is when you have a PCI or HIP application, where the environment needs to be isolated either by VPC-based tenancy, AWS account-based tenancy, or subnet-based tenancy. In any of these cases, you need to pick a single tenant architecture. Now, if you need a hand for this security compliance architecture, well, just reach out, guys. Now, let's dive into the architectures. A real SaaS architecture requires a multi-tenant analysis and design at the application and database level. So let's unfold these three architectures. Multi-tenancy at the application layer. The architecture number one is microservice multi-tenancy with Amazon ECS. Listen guys, quick impressive fact. By 2022, 90% of all new apps will be implemented with a microservice architecture. Given say that, Microservices are the recommended type of architecture since they provide a balance between modernization and maximum use of available resources including EC2 instance and compute units. As well as, it introduces a decomposed system with more granular services. And finally, the other variable in place is Amazon ECS, and it is the natural Amazon container orchestration system in the AWS spectrum. This architecture is highly recommended for startups small and medium SaaS companies. So what pro do we have here? Number one, it adds a fundamental DevOps principle, a loosely coupled architecture. Number two, it is easier to deploy new code to production. The next one, it helps perform a smaller deployment per microservice, which adds better agility. Additionally, it enables a pure and real distributed service. And the last point, this architecture provides more knobs for your DevOps team. So what are the cons? Well, we just got a few, and it's that Amazon ECS natively lives in the AWS cloud, and you can port this service into another cloud provider due to it is a proprietary service. Now let's go to the architecture number two, microservice multi-tenancy with Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service, Amazon EKS. Kubernetes is another alternative of microservice architecture, which adds an extra layer of complexity in the SaaS equation. However, 
you can overcome this complexity by leveraging Amazon EKS, the managed Kubernetes service from Amazon, which is de facto service by the Kubernetes community. On the same lines, the exciting part of this component from the rest of the architecture is that it provides the use of name bases. This attribute aids to isolate every tenant and its own environment within the corresponding Kubernetes cluster, and it wins in data privacy in the sense that you don't have to create different clusters per tenant, which bring cost reduction in compute resources and AWS hosting costs. I highly recommend it for sophisticated DevOps teams or jumpstart into the enterprise as software, which ClickIt has implemented Kubernetes on AWS dozens of times. So what are the pros of this architecture? Fundamentally, we have the same pros as the microservice architecture with Amazon ECS. In addition to this, as number one, it held with exceptional in-depth custom SaaS cluster configuration. And the number two, it is widely adopted by the enterprise SaaS companies. On the con side, we have the classic, a higher learning curve versus Amazon ECS. Number three, our final architecture, multi-tenancy with serverless. The dream of any AWS architect is to create a multi-tenant SaaS architecture with a serverless approach. Additionally, it requires a reasonable amount of time of collaboration with your dev team, as well extensive application of code changes and a transformative serverless mindset. Given say that, in a few years, it will build the ultimate solution and it will depend on the talent, capabilities and the SaaS use case. So for the pros, we have that no more over-provisioning your hardware, a truly end-to-end -end serverless development lifecycle. Number two a microservice per each event call. And number three, no need to worry about scalability, downtime, or availability. It is all built in in the serverless ecosystem. As the cons, we have that you need to refactor the entire SaaS application into serverless. And the last con is that it adds much more complexity than any other multi-tenant architecture at the app level. Moreover, at a high level, what are the moving parts on this next-gen serverless SaaS architecture? Well, every individual call becomes an isolated tenant call, either going to a logical service, which is a Lambda function, or going to the database data coming from the Amazon API Gateway as an entry point in the serverless application. Now that you have decoupled every logical service, the authentication and the authorization model needs to be decoupled by a third-party service like Amazon Cognito, which will be the one to identify the tenant, user, type of account, I am tenant role, and all these checks will bring back an STS token with the maintenance attributes. Notably, Amazon API Gateway will route all tenant functions to the correct Lambda function, matching the STS token. So guys, to wrap up on this architecture, what are we seeing is that a serverless SaaS architecture enables applications to obtain more agility, resilience, and a fewer development efforts, a truly no ops ecosystem. Now, do you need a new shirt dedicated developer for this architecture? Just ping us, guys. Now, to conclude, we just came to the end of this episode, and you have learned what are the best practices to architect your next generation SaaS application, utilizing a multi-tenant ecosystem, which brings multiple benefits as mentioned during this video. To find out more about how ClickIt helps SaaS enterprises to run and operate effectively DevOps practice in the cloud, or curious about hiring a new shirt developer on your same time zone, please check out our website at clickittech.com. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and comment below any SaaS architecture that I missed. And let's contribute to our LinkedIn network. Hasta la vista.